My most earningest year, I made roughly $625,000. At BuzzFeed? Yes. That was more money than I had ever seen in my lifetime. So like, then why leave it behind? I don't want to be 50 years old and look back on this moment and be like, what if? What's up, Andy? I feel like I'm extra close to you today. You are extra close. <laughs> why do you always move your chair close to me? So we can move back. Scroll back. <laughs> it's progressively getting closer. Scroll, back. Scroll, back. Scroll yes. back. Scroll back. Congrats on the townhouse you just listed. Thank you. We just did a super good video. I need, everyone needs to go see it. So I get, you know, I follow my calendar all day long and I don't even know what I'm doing all day. I have no control over my life. And then I see I have a property tour in the village with Andy for a townhouse. I'm like, that's interesting. He's been excited about this for months. By yeah. the way. I've been working on and it I forever. See it and I'm like, it's eighteen million dollars. Eighteen and a half million dollars. Eighteen and a half million dollars, and I get there, and it's him, and he's like finishing the staging and the art. I'm like, hold on, how'd you get an eighteen and a half million dollar village townhouse listing? And he's like, through TikTok, and then he like runs up the stairs and goes through. I'm like, wait, 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 come back and say that one more, <laughs> say that one more time, please. Um, and he did. It's crazy. Yeah, business of influence. Yeah. Crazy. There you <laughs> go. For, for context, Vivian, Andy's a real estate broker that we found on TikTok, TikTok and unfortunately yeah. found him. Now we're stuck with him. And I we believe, love Andy. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't say that. He's the, I talk about Andy all the time. Wow. Um, so I just wanted to congratulate you on thank that. You, I think thank that's you. I think that's super, super cool. So today's guest on BOI. Boy, we have a chat. Actually, our group chat Boy. is called the Boy Chat, which is, is weird. We have, so. we have girls in there too. Or do we? Yeah, Nelly's in there. Oh, yeah. I think that's oh. it, right? B O I though, like boy, like yeah. that like is boy gender neutral. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's a gender neutral oh. group like chat, friend. Yeah, but it's that's, a, that's a good business call. Influence. <laughs> yeah. All right, so today's guest, she's sitting right to the left of me, is your rich BFF and your favorite Wall Street girly. She over. <laughs> did I do that well? Yeah, I think I did well. Perfect. She has over six million followers across platforms. She's landed partnerships with MetLife, Rent the Runway, Credit Karma. I've seen that ad. Invesco, I think I've seen that ad too. Wealthfront, I think I've seen that ad to name a no. few. She's crushing it out there. Her first book, Rich AF, is out now and is also the host of her own podcast, Net Worth and Chill. So today, we're going to find out how and why she quit her comfy $600,000 annual salary job. Oh my God. To pursue your rich BFF full time. Vivian, too. Thank you so much for being here and welcome to the Business of Influence. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat. Yeah, of course. Welcome to the Blue Room. Your videos have taken over my TikTok for you page. Yeah, it's because you're. Friendly FBI man wants you to be better with money. Uh, oh, yeah, there's, <laughs> Whoa, you want to dig into that? Let's not dig into that. that. How are you with money? With money? We, we had uh, the, the guy on the Netflix show, what was his name? Uh, Ramit. Ramit. Yeah, Ramit. Yeah, yeah. He was incredible. And we, we talked about how, how to be like, rich. How to be rich. And like we dived into like, my collections. But it was a whole thing, and Brian won't let go of it. So yeah. glad I, to have you on. We're just here to help. Yeah, uh, it's this is really just a therapy session for me. Yeah, <laughs> really, I love what that. this what this is becoming. Yes. Um, who are you? <laughs> Listen, it's in the tagline. I'm Vivian Tu, your rich BFF and your favorite Wall Street girly. I started my career as a Wall Street trader, um, and I was the only young woman on the team. Went to U Chicago. Went to U Chicago, so I'm a big brain, big nerd, um, and. When I left the industry, I went to the tech space because what else am I gonna do to be able to wear ripped jeans and make that kind of money? Yeah. And when I got there, all of my new friends were like, yo, Wall Street? Does that mean you're gonna help me pick which health insurance I'm buying or you know, what's going in our 401k? Sh should I buy the company stock options? Is that good or bad? Mm. And they started asking me all these questions. Mm. And they would like form a small line by my desk to, at like lunch times to be like, um, we have a question. I'd be like, um, I would like for everybody to leave me alone. Like I wanna sit in silence and just eat this sad salad. Oh. But um, I ended up putting it on the internet like as a joke for my friends. Yeah, wh where did you post it the first time? Very first video went on TikTok. Oh, wow. And oh, the first like seven hours, nothing. I think like seven people saw it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like whatever, like this is just for my friends. It doesn't matter. Uh, hour eight, I was sitting on my couch with my now fiance at the time boyfriend and we were Congrats. watching TV, thank you. And my phone started to do the thing where your phone gets really hot. And I'm like, is this, is this oh, like yeah. gonna you start? Have, you didn't have notifications turned off. Yeah, and I was like, 
is this thing like about to explode? What's going on? And I open it and I look up, I'm like, why do I have just pages and pages of TikTok notifications? What is this? I was like, this is a bot, this is a virus. My phone got a virus. And then I open it and I'm like, huh, that's kind of weird. Like this video has like a lot of views wow. now and I have 7,000 followers and that's already more followers than I had on like my secret personal Instagram. You know, like I was like, that's weird, whatever gave it another couple hours. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Like now I have 20,000 followers. And by the end of the week, I had 100,000 followers and that video oh. ended up getting 3 million views. Was this before COVID or was it like, paint the picture? This was January 1st of 2021. And I started Got Your it. Rich BFF as like a little passion project for me. But pre-vaccine COVID. Yeah, pre-vaccine COVID. Ooh. And this was for my the friends. <laughs> when no one could bother me. I missed that time. Um, like it was for my friends. So like, I was like, oh, well, you know, when is the best time to do this for my friends? Yeah. January 1st, take a guess at what the number one New Year's resolution is. In, wait, 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 in 2021? <laughs> yeah. Or ever? Just like ever. Be lose lose weight. weight? Yes, yeah. the number one New Year's resolution is to lose weight. Yeah. I've been trying for like the past five years. Has not happened Same. for me. But the number two is to actually be better with your money oh, really? and to like get rich. Really? And I was like, lose oh. weight, get rich. Boom. Yeah, it feels Buy like house. yeah, it feels <laughs> like a pretty <laughs> solid one and two. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna put my very first video out, Jan one. Yeah, and it was for my friends, but it ended up going super crazy, like you know, gangbusters. And then yeah. it was perfect, and I started doing that for a living. You know what? You know what I find so interesting about kind of your style of content is it's it does two things at the same exact time, which I think is really really hard to do. One thing is is it, it's evergreen. Like the stuff you talk yeah. about, you could talk about at any time, right? Yeah. It's always good information to have, but then you're also really, really good at honing in on like trends and things to think mm -hmm. about right now, Yeah, which is hard, right? It's, it's hard to do. You and know I think, this better than anybody. It moves so fast. So fast. So fast. Yeah, we, we were just talking about fast fertizing and Ryan Reynolds and yeah. your ability yeah. to move really, really quickly, to jump on trends, to get on that news feed, because yeah. that's really what these feeds are. We forget that. Yeah. They used to be called news the news feed. feed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now That's it's just called weird, yeah. the That's feed. So now weird. it's just called yeah. the app. Like no one cares anymore. But it was always about news. And so that algorithm tracks the news. So when you're showing houses, if you're showing houses and talking about a, a trend that's going on, yeah. You're gonna get more views of that house just because the algorithm's gonna pick it up and say, yeah. oh, people like to see news, news, news. So mm -hmm. you do a, a great job at that. And you're really clever too with tying in your niche with whatever, like, I, what did I just see? The, oh, you think I'm funny. I think you're so <laughs> clever. Like the Drake album cover thing. Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, what, what is her and Drake? Like, what's the, like, yeah. what, what are they gonna do together? And you're like, boom, this album made Drake's son like, wealthy i'm like yeah, whoa yeah. that's crazy yeah. so you do a really good job with that so thank you guys video planning work like i'm sure something happens in culture and you want to or do you have like a variety of things you want to talk about and you're just waiting for the right moment to talk about them? so i have a variety of things that i do want to talk about but i do create my content in kind of two pillars one being evergreen i can slot this in wherever yeah but if something crazy happens or Drake releases for all the dogs or whatever. Like I can <laughs> slot something in real quick and that way it's really time sensitive. And I think and that best. content that really hits that way is just, it's just got that virality factor that evergreen is like, yeah, certain I've had evergreen videos go viral, but like there was no better time to be your rich BFF than the GameStop saga. Like I was pumping yes. out. Have you seen the movie yet? I so, haven't. So dumb so, money. It just came out. It just came out. Oh, it just okay. came out. I want to go see it. I didn't. I haven't seen it yet. But like, I was. You need to do your pumping own videos. Of it. Yeah. No, I remember. I was like pumping videos. I was like, I haven't slept in three days, and I've made like forty videos a day. But like, it was just crazy. Every single video was a hit. How often do you post? I post once a day. Oh. Okay. Interesting. I'm hardcore. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Why? How, how often do you post? Listen. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I. I used to have more time. You said it's our. If you ask Diego, who just like ran up here and then he scurried away in fear, um, uh, you know, we would we would post all the time everywhere. Yeah, There's just only so much. Yeah, only so much time. But you listen, you bring up a good point. Like that, the the world was obsessed with the GameStop saga, yeah. and so jumping on that and being the thought leader, it's like some of the best advice that you know we give to to everyone we talk to. It's like you can be entertaining, you can be hot, you can do whatever you want, but people want to follow opinions. 
right? That's why we follow, mm-hmm. that's why like Tucker Carlson gets fired, goes immediately on Twitter X, right? <laughs> and the following he has now is insane because they just wanna see his opinion of the news they already know. And you have a great, unique opinion, yeah. right? You have a unique way of putting it out there, and so. And I can break it down like you're a fifth grader. It's yeah. so digestible. Oh my god, yeah. you talk yeah, to me like especially for Adrian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> you have to talk about Drake, and then he understands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I you, feel like this is also like a slash bully Adrian. It oh, is. Yeah. No, it is. bully me. I know until he moves <laughs> it seats. Be him. It's that seat. Oh, wherever I have direct eye contact, <laughs> yeah. that's where my that's where my vitriol goes to the side. My peripherals aren't that great. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Wait. So reversing for a second let's go let's go back edwin castro mm-hmm. right powerball winner splurging like My crazy dude. you love that guy splurging like crazy on real estate mm-hmm. but then all these articles coming out about doing the number one thing that you shouldn't do if you win the lottery which is go spend a hundred million dollars on like beach houses yeah what would you do if you won the lottery as as you your person like you win the lottery yeah what would you do with your money well, first and foremost, I feel like the ma- vast majority of that money yeah. that I finally got, which keep in mind, like, first off, if you're taking the lump sum, just go ahead and cut that number in half. Then you got to give up to federal taxes. And in some states, you have to give up to state taxes. So you're looking at like probably getting a quarter of what the actual winning number is. Sure. And after that, I would say that I would be putting a vast majority of that into a diversified portfolio of just very relatively liquid investments, I would say. So public equities, um, you know, I'm a very, very ultra high net worth individual now. So I'm probably also investing in private equity. I'm probably making some VC investments, what have you. But I would also invest in real estate. I just wouldn't invest in real estate the way my dude Edwin has, okay? He's he's going a bit baller. He's he's spending a lot of money. It's not even necessarily how much money that he has spent. It's the type of properties that he's buying. So first and foremost, like we know that every year you're going to spend about one to 4% in just maintaining your properties. And if you have a place that's 47 mil, go ahead and assume it's gonna be very much on the high end of that. Like you've gotta keep the smart smart house smart. You got to have somebody doing the landscaping, taking care of the pool. That's millions a year. It's millions a year. And I think everyone who has commented like, oh, but it's an investment. It's like, do you have any idea, you would, how hard it is to buy or sell a $47 million home. There's only a handful of people in the entire world who can afford that. And it means that there's not much liquidity for him. There's not that many buyers. And it's very challenging because not only is he going to have to continue to pay property taxes on those, he's locking up money that otherwise could have been appreciating in other investments that might be a little bit more liquid, but like, when he does go to sell that home, if he ever chooses to do so, that's the point of being a power broker, right? You have all those connections of those ultra high net worth people who are buying and selling, buying and selling. But like, if he's trying to get that money out fast and in cash, he's gonna have to take a massive haircut. He's gonna sell at a huge loss. That house is not going to appreciate because he doesn't necessarily have the time to wait for the perfect buyer. And, I just feel like a lot of the purchases, I looked at it on a map, they're all within like 15 minutes of each other. And I'm like, bro, you didn't want to buy like a home somewhere else? Like, well, it's location, location, location. We see I the same you, thing in New York. But why would you buy three homes in LA when you can have one in LA, one in New York, one mm-hmm. overseas? That diversifies your portfolio because you never, ever, ever want to buy an entire bag of Kit Kats. You want to buy the Halloween pack where you got Kit Kats, Twix, Snickers, M&Ms, Skittles. You got everything. Digestible. Because when you're investing, what if one, what if something bad happens in one place, right? Sure. Yeah, of course. God forbid. Yeah, they want to put all your eggs in one basket. Exactly. God forbid there's a mudslide in LA. All three of his properties get destroyed. That's not great. But if he only has one there, he's one somewhere else, one somewhere else. Not only is he able to leverage the three beautiful homes yeah. and like travel, but like it, his his odds of making money are higher. Yeah, my, my assumption, because um, we do this a lot. Yeah. My, my assumption is that what he did is he bought his main house, he bought a staff house, yeah. and then he bought a family house. You know, like we've, 
we, we do this in the city. Someone will buy a penthouse yeah. and then they'll buy two or three apartments in the same building because they want their people to be on the same elevator ride yeah. and have the same front door. Or yeah. like, you know, when we do deals in Palm Beach, yeah. for example, you know, we'll spend nine figures on the house on the ocean, walk across the street, buy that house for whatever the price is yeah. because the staff need to have a place. Yeah. Then we go buy another house for the in-laws down the block and then somewhere near there, we'll go and buy the house that works for his office. Yeah. Because he will not want to have to go to the office office. He wants to have a home office that's nice, walking distance so he can come home for lunch and see the kids <laughs> if he has to. And so then people, you know, see that and they're like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Da, 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 but for their life. Yeah. You know, because his, Edwin's, he won, it was like 2 billion, right? 2.04 2, billion. 2.04. 2 so it was like 900 million after all the taxes, something no. like that. Oh, it was even less. Six something. Six something, really? Because it's half and then the, the, the penalty. So he, uh, the, the lump sum, he got like 997 mil. Yeah. yeah. And then post federal taxes, he ended up with like six, like a low 600 million something. What is it? So the lump sum. I thought that half was tax. No. The, ha the, ha the full oh, the amount is, is over a 20 year period. Yes. Oh, right. The full, okay, right. Over you get a, a little bit each. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want the lump sum, they'll give you half. Yeah. Otherwise, and then you got to pay taxes out yeah. of that. So you it's 600 something. Okay. So we took 100, bought some insane houses in LA, and then hopefully put the rest in a nice diversified portfolio. Do you think he did that? I don't know. Maybe he put it in his. Could you take 500 million and put it in a CD? No. <laughs> And just get like five percent, like what's, every six what's, months. What's the stat? You said in one of your videos, like seventy percent of lottery winners, winners go broke, be, go bank broke, go bankrupt. That's yeah. because, well, I mean, just like athletes, so athletes, athletes football yeah, players. Yeah, if you don't know how to manage a hundred dollars, you won't know how to manage a hundred dollars. Won't know how to manage a billion dollars. Well, yeah. let's break this down then. If you had a hundred thousand dollars today, you just won a lottery that's that size. How would you spend that? I'd wonder where the rest of my money went. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, I would take that money and, you know, so I win $100,000. I'll probably see half of that number, call it $50,000. Um, I would put away about a year's worth of my expenses into an emergency fund. Yes. I would pay down any sort of high interest rate debt. I'm lucky yep. I don't currently have any, but if I had credit card debt, I would wipe that. I would make sure I don't have any sort of mm -hmm. high interest rate debt. Um, I would max out my retirement funds. So things like a uh, IRA, a Roth IRA, if I'm still working my W-2 job, making sure that I'm putting as much as of my income from my job into a 401k or a 403b. Um, so, you know, I can live off of this money, the extra money that I have. What's a 403b? Um, it's a 401k if you work for like a nonprofit or like a government, huh, gotcha. it, like certain, basically the categorization of the company. Okay. I would take a little bit of the $50,000 and I would treat myself. I would go on a really nice vacation, but yeah, that additional money, I would then put towards investing. Because frankly, that's not enough for me to retire. Yeah. Right. That's not enough for me to say F you and walk away forever. Like I get Edwin's in a very different situation because that's like true like F you money, mm -hmm. but I would try to be smart about it. So what would that, you do, Adrian? If you won the lottery, what would you spend money on? How yeah. much trash would you go buy <laughs> and turn I, into furniture? Jesus Christ. Um, I, I would try to build a business, dude. I don't know what it is. Um, mm. I'm the, probably the wrong person to ask. I'm the least responsible of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would immediately buy an apartment to rent out in, well, not Florida, because that market's a little inflated, I think, but I would buy a rental property. <laughs> mm, I'm from Florida. It's a little inflated right now. Listen, <laughs> don't tell me that. I live in Miami. Things, I live in Florida. Things go up forever, Andy Claire. Okay, yes, okay? I agree with you. Everything goes up forever until it goes down. And when it does go down, it goes down forever. That's just the way markets work. <laughs> yeah. That's just the way markets work. He's saying that because he just opened a branch in Miami. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Well, whoever just won that recent lottery, I think it was the second biggest in lottery. In California again. Again, it's always California. It's 1. Oh. 1. Because the tax billion. is so high. Yeah. That's why California loves people to play the lottery because I, they make so much money on it. California actually doesn't tax lottery winnings, I think. Never mind. Wait, I've played the lottery here and I've never won, not even a scratch off. Well, <laughs> every time I have one That's drink, so I immediately Andy. go to the corner store and go. <laughs> That's so cute, Andy. I don't, uh, think, I don't think there's ever been a winner in New York. In the, in the Florida lottery, I would win all the time. I like getting the $1 ones because it's like fun, it's exciting. All right, I'm gonna wow, take okay. I'm gonna take this yeah, all the way back. Work. All right, Vivian, you're at BuzzFeed. Yeah. You, may, you just made the most amount you've made in a year. Yeah. You leave. Yeah. What was that decision? Why? What was your thought process? Yeah. So I've actually broken this out for the BFFs. Like I showed my actual like every year, right? Every year. I saw it. And my most earningest year, I made roughly six hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. At Buzzfeed. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Your girl was 
a high performer. I will say, like this was not like the average pay. And that was in sales. Yes. Sales. So that was that was base plus commissions. Correct. And so, so you were selling ads. ads right? Yes. Yeah. So we were not necessarily always ads. So we put ads on the internet. We so would create collabs, branded brand partnerships. partnerships. Yeah, yeah. We launched. I actually worked with a travel company to launch a joint business venture. Nice. Um, there were in real life pop ups. You, you seem know. like you'd be great at sales. Yeah, I, I'd like to think so. You know, got that smile, got yeah. that charisma. I'll call you until your phone breaks. Yeah, like, you, sound you like, have great energy. Sound too. like you'd be That's... intense with follow up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, never, you're not getting ever away. Forget. Like buzz, buzz, bitch. It's me. I'm back. Yeah. Like it's you, you can't. Escape. I will make a TikTok bitch. about you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got it. Um, but you know, that was more money than I had ever seen in my lifetime. Yeah. I was so like, then why leave it behind? Was... That's the scariest part. Um, I had made so much money, and I was like. This is a great living. I can continue to do this job, make a ton of money, have a wonderful life. Yep. I ride off into the sunset with my loving fiance who also, you know, he works in high finance. He works in private equity. It's not like either of us were like, you know, riding along the other's coattails. Like we were both really high income earners. But Your Rich BFF had kind of blossomed to a point where I was making decent like a little bit of money. It wasn't a lot. It certainly was not $625,000 worth of money. Um, I think we had made a couple tens of thousands at that point. It, through so, content, you mean? Through content, through getting paid through the platforms, like a yep. YouTube AdSense, like uh, the Reels payments, brand partnerships. Um, I had done maybe like one speaking gig, but I was like, I don't want to be 50 years old and look back on this moment and be like, what if? Mm -hmm. I really want to give this a go. So I sit down with my yeah, fiance. Take a swing. Take a swing. Um, I mean, look at where we're sitting. Yeah, well. Like, take a swing. All the potential. You're like, I okay, the there's money coming in. If I just double down on this, I could definitely. Yeah, like, got for it. sure. And I had set aside a hundred thousand okay. dollars, which was a lot of cash. Yep. And I was like, this is BFF fund. So like, if I don't make another dollar from this the next calendar year. I can still pay my rent. I can still buy groceries. I can still go on vacation. You can I always can, go get another job. I can always go get another job. You can always job. go back to work. And I sat down with my fiance and I was like, what if I do this? Like, what if I burn through this hundred thousand dollars? What if I don't make any money? What if like, what if all, what if, what if? And he literally is so supportive. I was like, like I get emotional thinking about this, but he was like, well, did you forget that like I make a ton of money? Like, I'm not gonna let you starve. I'm not gonna let us get kicked out of our apartment. Like." just try. And then I said, okay, well, if he believes in me, mm -hmm. I'll do it. And so I did it. And that was also the time when, because I finally left my day job, um, management was willing to sign me. I got signed by an agency like three months right after that. WME? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So one of the big ones, huge, one of the, you know, a, a good one. And <clears throat> I felt so lucky because over the next six months, I think I like almost 10 X my business. Jesus. Oh. Yeah. And last year, I mean, this is public information cause I had to give it to Forbes to like, you know, get on some lists. But last year I made $3.2 million. Just through TikTok? Through everything, through social, through my book deal, through the podcast, through content, through brand partnerships, through speaking, through nice. my, all my different lines of income. And there's no reality I would have made that in any W2 sure. job. You don't make that kind of money unless you're in sales yep. or unless you work for yourself. Yep. And if this burns out and this blows up in five years, I can always go back and get a media job because yeah, now I have even more experience. Anybody will hire me. 100%. But I wouldn't have been able to do it the other way around. So what's your team look like? So I have a full service team. Yep. I've got agents at WME. My uh, management team's at Range Media. I've got an attorney who's just my attorney. Everybody was like, oh, you can use business affairs yeah, through yeah, agents yeah, and yeah. stuff. I was like, I want my own attorney. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have my wonderful publicist who is sitting behind the scenes. I have a business management team. So they uh, uh, encompass like my accountant, my bookkeeper, sure. an account manager, somebody who like helps keep, you know, the business's lights on, pays the bills, you know, services that I am subscribed to. Um, and then I have someone who's helping me write the newsletter and someone who uh, mm -hmm. manages the growth of the website as well as any sort of um, strategies, content strategies for the future. Nice. So yeah. if you were to start from zero today, what would be the one employee of the team you have now that you would hire immediately if you could just have one employee? 
who's your number one investment that you think has paid off the most? Ooh, careful, your PR person's right there. <laughs> you know, I PR think... PR for sure, but second. PR? <laughs> um, Not I, including PR. I would say it's the first person I hired, my attorney. Attorney. Because for me, spending brain. so much time pouring over every single word and every single contract that I ever signed was not a good use of my time. Sure. One, my eyes started to glaze over and I would still miss stuff. Whereas now I hardly need to read my contracts because I don't sign them until she says you can. Sure. And I haven't had an issue ever since. I've never been trapped into a deal that I wanted. I didn't want to be in. I've never had to do something that I didn't feel comfortable doing because she's a shark. I see some of the contracts she sends back and they are bloody. Mm -hmm. Like she has made, you know, edits in every single line. And I'm like, thank goodness. Uh, yeah. Because otherwise I would have just signed this. So I think taking care of your business and protecting yourself is important. Um, it's not the sexiest answer, right? I think being a creator and being an influencer, people want to feel special. There's a little bit of ego in it, of mm -hmm. being like, oh, I'm signed at WME, or like, I have talent management, I have a publicist, I have, you know, somebody who does the accounting and like the bookkeeping and stuff like that. But like, I think it's just like being a little practical sometimes is not a bad thing. Sure. What was the biggest difference? You quit your job, you're obviously spending more time on my, or your rich BFF. Like, what is your day to day? Like, what's, what's the difference? Uh, you started a podcast. Was that before quitting or after quitting? That was after. Mm -hmm. um, Basically what had happened was I had a really booming digital business and then I was like, okay, now I have my digital business. Not that it's on autopilot, but like I can run this with very little more effort than sure. I've already put in. Um, but I'd like to have these things. Like I want to have a podcast. I want to um, write a book. I want to. And you did. Yeah. You show off the cover. Cute. Yeah. It's a great cover. Rich as fuck. The winning money mindset <laughs> that will change Didn't your think life. he was going to say it, but. <laughs> well, do you, is the book actually rich as fuck or is it rich, rich AF? AF? Rich AF. AF. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to try and keep things good for search engine optimization mm. so I wouldn't get mm. penalized. Oh, this is a galley copy. This is a galley copy. Nice. We'll get you a real one and oh, I'll sign okay. that one. I see nice. it says March 20 or December, December 20, 26. It comes December 26. out December 26. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Um, and so, so where many, can they buy it? Yeah. So many words. You can actually find the book at richaf.me. I made the URL a manifestation because I think that's like good. It's a little woo woo, but it's good energy. Yes. Um, Love it. And I hope that, you know, people can take the content that I'm creating, the book that I wrote, and read it from page one to the very last page and feel more accomplished, more financially stable, and more financially capable than when they first picked it up. And I want people to just be confident that they can build the life that they want without really having to necessarily eat rice and beans and like cut out everything that makes them happy because there are other strategies that are smarter and that rich people have been using for generations and that we should all know about. So what would you tell somebody right now who's 21 years old, Yeah, they're in a city, right? Everything is obscenely expensive. Yeah. So Affordability is at a 45 year low. Yeah. The idea of owning a home is like so far away. Rent every month is terrifying. They feel like they're working a job and then another job and they're trying to make ends meet while still putting a smile on their face. <laughs> like what do you what do you what do you say? Yeah. What do, what do you do? Listen, I don't I think it's sometimes you have to be really careful, right? Because when someone is living paycheck to paycheck, which by the way, I was when I first started on Wall Street. Yeah, sure. I like I was making so much money, but I was still living to paycheck to paycheck. My rent was so expensive. You can't like budget your way out of a deficit. Sure. But it's really important to be mindful about how you're spending and putting those dollars where your values lie. So, okay. I think we need to keep in mind economies of scale. So, I lived in a, you know, I had one roommate and we would get an apartment that had two bedrooms. It would have been a way nicer apartment in a way nicer part of town had I had four roommates and we got a five bedroom sick place, got a full floor, but we still shared one kitchen and, you know, we had two bathrooms or three bathrooms instead of five. Yeah. And so I think knowing where you can save like that to not spending money on stuff you don't even like to impress people you don't even care about mm -hmm. because I was buying 
red bottom Louboutins. I was buying brand name designer, like little, like uh, the, the stocking caps. I was, you know, I had that coat that everybody has and Oh, You're we basically were, talking we're, about Andy. We're right really now. just laughing at Andy right now. <laughs> oh, it's brutal. Absolutely violent. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I just think that like I was buying stuff to keep up to impress people that I was like, oh, maybe they'll like me if like sure. I have stuff. And last, I think just like really understanding value for me, it's always been food, it's always been travel, it's always been experiences. And even when I had two nickels. To rub together hardly um i would scrimp and save and i would cut out of certain parts of my life so that i could then ball on a budget yeah that summer when i wanted to go to santorini with my new boyfriend and wanted Ooh. to live this happy romantic life it, he's my fiance now so it worked yeah. like i trapped this man <laughs> but like you know I, I think it's really understanding where those values lie and spending according to your values because you can't afford everything but you can afford anything mm -hmm. But you have to just make sure that you're not spending your money on everything because that's never going to happen. Did your parents instill that in you? Or like, did your parents teach you like good money habits growing up? Or my parents were really good savers because they're immigrants. Did they wash their Ziploc bags to reuse them? Yes. My parents did the same thing. One hundred percent wash <laughs> Ziploc bags. Like in your kitchen, there's one bag filled with other bags from the grocery store that you use as like the mini trash bags. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like we were not buying like the the new little bags. We used uh, we used to reuse the yogurt containers just for like oh, other and there's like storage. salsa inside. Yeah. You're like, why is there salsa in this yogurt container? The the cookies. That's a sewing kit. Yep, exactly. Yeah, like, yep, the little blue tin. Reduce, yeah. reuse, recycle. But like, I think a lot of the saving and budgeting values did come from my parents, but the actual growing my money, having that mindset of like, I can be that rich person that I want, that I've seen, that I want to emulate, it came a lot from my mentor, my first manager at work. You know, watching- at JP Morgan? Yeah, yeah. Watching her click clack into the office in a brand new pair of designer shoes, had a new designer bag that she would just like fling onto the sh shelf. I'd be like, be careful with that. Like, <laughs> it's like thousands of dollars. Like I couldn't even imagine having so many of them that she would just like fling it onto the shelf. And I was like, I wanna be just like that. I wanna have every single one of those things. And it was such a shallow thing to begin with of being like, I just wanna be cool and rich, but it eventually turned into, oh, like I can have the exact life that I want. The have my two homes, my one primary, a vacation home, put my kids through school so that they can be, you know, an art history major if they want. Because when I was choosing majors, when I was deciding what I wanted to do for a living, money was the number one factor. Follow your passions is some shit rich parents tell their kids. Mm -hmm. My parents did not tell me that. They were like, make money, survive without us. And I was like, okay, cool. But I want my kid to do whatever they want. So what do you think is the one uh, feeling or emotion that people, that stops people from moving on to the next step? I think fear. it's like fear, but also like contentment mm. of like the status quo. Like you like working nine to five, you like seeing your friends on the weekend for brunch, you like getting a mani-pedi every week, you like, you know, uh, belonging to that fancy ritzy gym. Great, but if you want your life to look different, do you think that's going to happen by continuing to do the same thing over and over again? It's not. You might have to cut out a, for a temporary period of time some of those creature comforts, mm -hmm. you might have to put in two extra hours of work every afternoon, every single day for five days a week. You're not gonna be comfortable. There's a level of discomfort that comes with change that a lot of people aren't ready to you know, accept, but they're like, why doesn't my life change? It's like, well, how has your behavior changed? So I actually agree with you, but from another viewpoint in this sense, that for me, the thing that's always worked for me is I, I will continue living the lifestyle I want to live, but I need to make more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way I've always thought of it. It's not I need to save more money. I need to make more money. Yeah. But obviously at the start, it was I need to save money so that I can be at a stable place where I'm not like drowning yeah. in debt to then focus on making more money. Yeah. Well, you know, you can only save as much as you earn. You can always earn more money. Exactly. Oof, that's good. Because think about getting a five to $10,000 raise. That's like not unheard of at all. That's like pretty par for the course, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can get a $5,000 raise. That happens all the time for so many people. Do you know how hard it is to cut $5,000 of expenses out of your life? 
you're never having a latte ever again. Do you're not eating Uber avocado eats. toast. Like, <laughs> forget it. Uber in general. Go ahead and just delete the app. Like, <laughs> you're impossible. not, you're not getting that. Just take the subway, man. Dude, just impossible. Just do it. Impossible. But yeah, that's what I would do. If I yeah. had to like, like <laughs> impossible <laughs> taking the dude. subway. Dude, I, if I had to look it's at my Uber. It's when you sit with somebody and you actually look. Because I, I sit with a lot of, you know, we have real estate agents here, yeah. staff members. You know, people always complain, oh, I'm not making enough money, not making enough money, not making enough money. I'm like, okay, well, before we talk about how much money you're making, let's talk about how much money you're spending. Yeah. Let's actually just go online. What do you use? JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, what do you want to do? Yeah. Right, let's log in and just like pull year to date, how much money have you spent? Yeah. What does your life cost? Oh. And I'll ask agents all the time. I'm like, okay, so what is your hourly wage? And no one knows the answer because they never actually sit down and think about how much money do I want to make this year? Let me divide it out by working hours and see, okay, that's my quote unquote hourly wage. Anything above that is bonus. Anything below that, I should probably invest in hiring other people to do. Otherwise I'm spending too much money doing that thing. Yeah. And then also think and say, like to your point, how much have I spent? Spent on Uber because the individual twenty to forty bucks per trip, like yeah, it's in Miami, it's way cheaper. It's not fair. What in right? Miami Ubers are so expensive? Oh, uh, and no. I, no, no, compared, compared to New, to New York, York. No, well, New York. Yes. For me to go one block in New York today, it's ninety-seven dollars. Okay, New York Uber is insane. Are you okay? But it's it is crazy. It's, it's, it was, it's, it's not Uber Black. Yeah. It's like Uber X, and yeah. you have to sit on top of the car now. <laughs> Somebody told me they saw him on the subway like two weeks ago. That's how expensive it is. Someone <laughs> saw me? Yeah. You're like, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. It's not because I can't afford it. It's because it's traffic faster. It's is faster. so bad. insane. Yeah. The Upper West Side of yeah, here. Dude, yeah, dude, to go from like the Upper West Side to Soho or to get to Brooklyn, <laughs> oh my sometimes God. I'm just like, okay, what's the ETA? Two hours? It's yeah. crazy. Fuck yeah. My life. Well, yeah, so I'll just jump in the train and I take photos and it's great. Yeah. <laughs> what I think is really crazy is that I know people who make a tenth of what I make and they spend more money than I oh, do. Oh, by It's far. crazy. Yeah, it's sure. insane. I'm like, what do you mean you only call Uber Blacks? Yeah, like no, you crazy. literally don't, like you don't you you are not even in the tax bracket to be considering that. No, it's like the, it's a the wealthier you are, the cheaper you become. Oh, right? it's because so bad. Because you understand the value of money. I know how hard I had to dollar. work to get it. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Have you guys seen that app that like breaks down like on a monthly basis what you're spending on what? It's and, like Acorn, maybe is that that one? Uh, there's a couple. Yeah. But I downloaded one and it's like it's like a pie chart too. And is it my, like this is Uber Eats, just like all of it? Yeah. For you? Food. It was and just going out to Food. eat and stuff. I also have two kids, so like that yeah. that yeah. doesn't help. I deleted the app right away. I was like, I, I saw you, went on, you went on a date night last night. Yeah. On a Sunday. Night. I know, I know, That's I know. That's some rich shit right there. Thanks, dude. So Wait, was it a Sunday dinner date or a brunch date? It was, it was a Sunday dinner date. Oh, that's, that's nice. Cute. That's it was cute. cute. Yeah, it was cute. Sunday uh, is nice because there's like no hardcore expectations there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was great. <laughs> no one's sleeping great. over on a Sunday night. Are you joking? She lives with me. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> she did sleep over. You as an entrepreneur, do your weeks blend? Because I don't see Sunday as different as Tuesday because I work on the weekends too. Yeah. Like Drake, like what is, what's that Drake song? It's like working on the weekend, like usual. Like that's me, always. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Well, I think we all do now. Though. Yeah. I meet a lot yeah. of people who are W two, but then they also have their side hustles in the evenings yeah. or on the weekends as they're trying to figure out. Yeah. How to be like you? Yeah. Right. How do they be like you? I have a question though. Personal relationship. We can cut this out if you don't want me to use oh, this. Oh no. We can um, do that. So you're engaged. Yeah. When are you getting married? Uh, June of next year. Ooh. Yeah. Are you gonna have a prenup? Yeah. Oh. Oh, are you joking? Did you already talk about it? Yeah. Oh. I will say my Oof. fiance and I good. are super, super cool. One, we rarely fight because we have one single brain cell to share between the two of us. <laughs> but also like we were so transparent about money and I don't even know where this necessarily came from because it hasn't been the case in some of my past relationships, but we talk about money so much and it is such a comfortable topic for the two of us that We've never, ever, not once in our entire six and a half year relationship ever fought about money. But do you think that's because you both make money? Certainly. But what I will say is for the first five years of our relationship, he made more than I did. And sure. it wasn't close. Like he made a lot more money and he never made me feel any type of way about it. He never made me feel bad. He never made me pay more for like we were never 50 50 on the rent. We were sure. never 50 50 on the vacation. But did you contribute to rent? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, but it was like a commensurate amount. Like, a, like based on what? Yeah, we're exactly. Making, like, yeah, yeah. you know, I think one year our rent was like $5,000 and I paid two and he paid three. Mm -hmm. Like, he made more money than I did. And he was like, that's totally fine. Yeah. And now I'm very lucky. I make more money. And my biggest goal is to never ever make him feel any type of way 
that I make more money now because we're a team. So who this pays, doesn't who, exist without who him. Who pays for dinner? So we Ooh. actually have a really- Do you have a joint checking account? Uh, we do have a joint account, but that's for like expenses like- Groceries, the house, more, yeah, stuff. Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. He, I have actually, I think I've paid for dinner like I, maybe a handful of times in our entire six and a half year relationship. I've never, I like rarely pay for dinner. Okay. For our home that we bought together, yeah. um, our apartment down downtown, I put in six figures more than he did and our co-ownership agreement says we are 50-50 partners, even though I put in six figures more. Sure. Because did you ever in struggle? Miami. No, here. Oh, here. Yeah, we, oh. we own here. I rent down in Miami. Got it. But, are you a um, resident of Florida? I am a resident of Florida. Lucky. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm very. laughs> Our entire personality is New York. <laughs> but it wouldn't, but it wouldn't we, we couldn't change anything. Dude, I have looked into it. Like you can't, <laughs> you can't because wherever you earn you spend income, the, if you earn a, like, yeah. if I lived in Florida. It's but not we, a time thing? No, no. I mean, it is. It is. Depending on how you earn your income. So like uh, with like education, a hundred percent. In a, it's only a matter of time before the entire ventures team moves to Florida. Yeah. But for brokerage, yeah. I could live in Florida. But if I sell a place here, you pay yeah. New York. Like we're tax. literally exactly. selling New York, so we yeah. can't get away. Yeah. From it's, it. And you're playing. And the way that I justify it in my head, just so that you don't cry, is um, uh, that you we would not sell a place for twenty million dollars if it if New York didn't make it so. Yeah. Right. So you can complain yeah. about the tax or you can say, you know what? I'm actually just, pay I'm playing with the house's money. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because that house anywhere else is like 800 grand yes. or $2 Correct. million or whatever Correct. it might be. So the commissions are large because New York allows them to be large. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's, People want to live here because the city is their yeah. backyard and they get so to you run pay around. The, you pay the tax yeah. for it. I have multiple billionaire clients. This is boy math, by the way. Still, this is still, <laughs> totally boy math, 100%. But there's multiple billionaire clients that we have who still are residents of New York. They still live here. They own major properties and they're not leaving. And I'm like, hey, would you ever relocate? And they're like, I just like New York too much. I'm like, but wouldn't you save so much money? And they're like, yeah, but but I make a lot. Like, yeah. I, he's like, I don't want to live in Florida. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to live in Texas. To do what? To save a little money so... I don't like my life as much. Like, yeah. I like the restaurants here. I like the stuff. I like the craziness. I like that it's loud sometimes. Yeah. And that's why we see a lot of people coming back to New York yeah. post COVID, right? They all moved out to the woods and now Very they're like, dude, I can't eat at Olive Garden every weekend. I gotta I'm come dead. back to the city. <laughs> I gotta come back. But Miami's a different story. Yeah. Miami, South Florida is a different story because it's a lot of transplants have gone there and they've set yeah. down real there's a lot of roots. There's a lot of great And the food numbers and are like, insane. Yeah. It's what? insane, dude. Why is money so uncomfortable to talk about and how how do we fix that? Yeah. Because I know that was like part of your like mission. Yeah. I mean, this, this, us sitting around talking about what we make, being on a show like Million Dollar Listing where they show each broker's commission check <laughs> after a home is sold, like content and media that makes talking about money less awkward and makes it more commonplace is exactly how we make talking about money less taboo because- Yeah, it removes the stigma. When, if you guys like think about this, like I think about some of the richest people I know and they are without a doubt at their country club, at some golf course, at some social like members only club talking- hold on, Sorry, hold on one second. It's just my mother-in-law. Oh yeah. Bigger. Hold on one second. Hi, yeah. So, sorry, sorry, but it's raining here and she's exhausted. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm just in the middle of a podcast. There One second. Go. Very tired. I would take the train, but it has to walk for. Okay, so you want an Uber from? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dead. Treat to home, right? Yeah, please. Okay, I'll do it right now. Sorry, stand inside. One second. Yeah. Okay. Hi, oh, Zena. Stay, stay calm. <laughs> sorry, I just got to take care of this. No, my you were so good. My wife is on a plane back from London, and my driver fucked up my car. And so. What? Yes. Dude, oh, Yuri my. is just. <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna take any Yuri slander here. <laughs> None of it. Also, I'm dying because she doesn't know how to call Uber herself. She because will my, not my, put it on no. her phone. My my mom is like, um, I'm at the location. Please call. I'm yeah, like, yeah. So I've got to tell her she missed okay. an Uber I got for her this morning. She's like, I couldn't find it. I'm like, I, it was right there. Yeah. <laughs> I told it's right here on the map. And then she's like, No, I couldn't find it. So the guy canceled. And then she found the car, gets in. He's like, No, I just no, canceled. Cancel. I don't know where you are. No. I'm like, I, I, I don't know what. And she's freaking out. The baby's yeah. crying in the background. What do you, real quick, what do your parents think about you making, leaving your job to make TikToks? Because oh. I essentially did that. And my mom's like, Are you fucking stupid? So when I left <laughs> uh, JP Morgan to go to BuzzFeed, we got into a massive blow up fight. And she was like, 
we spent a quarter million dollars for you to go to U Chicago. It's oh. like the number three school in the country. It's known for its economics, okay. finance like careers track. Yep. You get the dream job. You get the dream job at the dream bank. Mm -hmm. And now what, you're gonna go write quizzes about what kind of cheese are you? Like <laughs> my mom literally was like, that is pathetic. We are so disappointed, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, bro, I can't even do this right now. I'm an only child by the oh, way. Yeah, so it was so like you, extra bad. Extra hard, yeah. Okay, but like, let's put ourselves in their shoes. It's actually crazy that we can do this nowadays. Yes. No, no, I get it, yes. but like our immigrant <laughs> parents, like they're, they're, they're taught that one track yeah. of life, yes. right? Yeah, because I, I'm gonna Lawyer, defend them Lawyer, doctor, now engineer, you get to pick one. I, I, they didn't have the power of making money off a cheese quiz before. Yeah. So like, they don't understand. No, it's I, like I, get it, I get it, I get it. So like, when I first went to New York, my mom's like, so what are you gonna do? Who's this Ryan guy? And you're gonna make YouTube, like what? Like, <laughs> yeah. You make money like that? Yeah. And then when I told my mom, because I'm, I'm part-time, because uh, I make my own content, and she's like, wait, you're leaving a good job with Ryan to like make these TikToks? <laughs> I'm like, mom, like, and I have to like feed it to her in like an analogy, and yeah. she still doesn't get it, so. Well, so Bless when I soul. left um, finance, we didn't talk for like two to three months, and I'm an only child. Like I call my parents like all the time, and yeah. it was like a brutal like cold war there. Yeah. Um, but, when I finally started making money at BuzzFeed, they were like, oh, we like totally get it now. I'm like, oh, you get it now. <laughs> like you get it now that I'm making money. That's funny. Um, but when I started Your Rich BFF, I didn't tell them that I had done that for eight months until I started to monetize. So that when I call them the one time, cause like my mom was like, my mom's like not an idiot, right? Like she's starting to catch on that I'm way more burnt out than usual. I'm working every weekend. like there's a ring light in the background when I FaceTime her. She's like, what is that? <laughs> my mom's catching on, right? And at a certain point, I'm like, I, I gotta like spill the beans before like one of my like little cousins goes and asks my aunt what's going on. My aunt asks my mom and my mom's like, what the hell? Right. Um, so I'm like, hey mom, I just wanna let you know, um, eight months ago I started a TikTok and I'm a little, and like I literally word vomited that I had started this and I ended the word vomit with, and oh yeah, by the way, I've already made $100,000 doing this. And she was like, yeah. And so there was like a silence for a second as her brain processed. She's trying to like process. Yeah. Oh, but. But then the first follow-up question was, wait, did you just say you made $100,000 doing this? And I was like, oh, I got her. Yeah. I got her this time. Like, she's not going to say shit this time. And when I explained to her what it was, she was like, okay, well, that's cool. I'm glad, you know, you're able to do this while working your full-time job and make sure to save that money. And I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> And then, love you know, my grandparents. <laughs> literally love my grandparents, but I did it like simultaneously for a year and three months before I quit mm. to take it full time. Yeah. And when I took it full time, I called her and I was like, this is a courtesy call to let you know what is about to happen. I don't want feedback. This is not a question. Dude, no advice. I'm not asking. <laughs> I'm not asking. I'm telling. This is what's happening. Yeah. And my mom was like, okay, well, you've already done it once. Like, it seems fine. And I was like, who kidnapped my mom? Who's this woman that's on the so phone? so funny. And yeah, but you have, a, you have an unwavering confidence that's really hard to teach. Like, I totally understand being a parent, being nervous for a kid that doesn't have the confidence to go out and strike it for themselves. Yeah, so doesn't do, have the sauce. Yeah, you do have the sauce. Like, yeah. you gotta have the sauce, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? It, it's funny, we have, a, we have an agent here. She runs one of our Long Island markets, but when I first met her, she was a trader at Barclays. Yeah, yeah. She was in the dark pools. Yeah, yeah, And she was like the woman on that floor. Her name is Rachel King. And she was like, I wanna get into real estate. I don't wanna do finance forever, but I am not leaving this job and all my benefits to come yeah. and like do apartments. And so she was the only person I ever allowed to work as an agent on my team when I had a team full uh, part-time. And she would do it at nights and on weekends. She would like sneak into conference rooms and stuff. Dead. And she was like, I don't think I'm ever gonna get to a point where I feel comfortable leaving this, this job and the salary and the health insurance and all that. And then someone tells her at a party about their landlord having just died at a building in the East Village where a friend of hers was renting an apartment. And Rachel's brain as a salesperson immediately goes to, what's your landlord's name? <laughs> because she starts thinking about like, Oh, I should get that listing. He yeah. just died. She gets the landlord's name, tracks down the LLC, finds the attorney, finds out that this woman owned like five apartments in this old building in the East Village, gets the attorney to set a meeting with her because she's so intense, right? Gets all five listings, sells them all in the matter of one week, makes more money from doing all that than she would have in her year, year. at Barclays. 
quit the next week. Yeah. She's a savage. And She's because savage. that that was like the deal, and I'll never forget it, because as she was doing them, I'm like, this is aggressive. Like, go for it. But this is this is what you should be doing. And she's like, oh, I know how to do this now. Oh, I get it now. I know how to build my own business. I'm not gonna be worried mm-hmm. about making money before, you know? My parents were nervous about me coming to New York too. And I, I think, I mean, sounds weird to say this. I mean, thank God my grandfather died and <laughs> left me 20 grand, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. That. <laughs> that 20 grand, I like, I put it into, it was, Two CDs, ten thousand dollars a pop. Yeah. So that was like my nest egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And then I had my construction money because I worked in construction yeah. every summer in high school and college. And so that was like my spending money. And I came here with no that way I didn't have to have a job. Right. And my rent was two thousand bucks my second year. My first year it was uh, eleven hundred dollars a month. And then it jumped up. And then I um uh, uh and I just never really told them. They're like, You're gonna come to New York City to be an actor. Yeah. Which to my parents meant prostitute you know <laughs> no. and i was like i was like yep yep i'm doing plays for free on the sidewalk i'm playing a clock this is what you got to do what you got to do to make it and i'll never forget i called my first paying job wasn't even in acting it was in uh one of my first paying jobs was in was in hand modeling and wait let I, me see the hands i it's got great hands they are good they yeah. are very nice yeah thanks like that and so <laughs> i um uh i cast to hold phones for at&t and they paid me 150 bucks an hour. And I remember calling my parents so excited. And they paid me, for, I went to Hamilton, they paid for me, I had an English major. I was like, you know, they set me up for life. And I'm like, guys. Look at my hands. I just got the greatest job. I'm a hand model now. <laughs> and they were like, you, you do hand jobs for what? I'm like, no, 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 I'm a hand model, mom. And I will never forget that phone call. It is like burned into my brain as somewhat traumatizing, but also hilarious. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I did. I Damn. held phones for a long time to pay the rent. I wouldn't be here without those hand jobs. You know? That's a great segue. <laughs> Vivian, what's next? <laughs> what? So many cool things coming up. Um, in particular, I do want to showcase oh. Rich AF out December 26th. Showcase it with your face. Okay, yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's just a, that's a great Christmas present. This is a this is going to be a wonderful new year, new me gift. Everybody in your life wants mm. one. Mm. Richaf.me is the URL to order one. Um, I'll be roaming. Everyone get it. Yeah, roaming cities to do signings and meet the BFFs IRL. Um, But you can also find me across the internet as your rich BFF on any social media platform. I have a podcast called Net Worth and Chill. And fingers crossed, we are working on some cool other projects um, for TV. Great. Congrats. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks awesome. for having me. Yeah, of course. That was fun. No more. I'm done with the Adrian bullying. It's all right. I'll get over <laughs> it eventually. Thanks for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me. Woo! Yeah. Another one in the cans.